Hello everyone, this is Jason at Indoor Growers, and today I have with me Corey Young with Apocalypse Survival Systems. And today he's going to show us his all-in-one plug-and-play aquaponics grow system. Corey? Alright. First step, we have our, uh, our fish tank. This is actually the fish tank itself. And the, uh, the system, if we can get it any better showing, it has a pump and a light as well for okay. your viewing pleasure. Okay. In the back, in the back, we have, in case you leave it outside, this is an emergency drain in case it has any type of overflow. Cool. So you don't have to worry about anything. You can actually run this to one of your plants in the garden and just replace the water that's in the fish tank and it will water your plant in the garden with the fish emulsion as well. Free fertilizer? Yes. The pump. What yep. is that? We I have a, really tell. this is our pump here and this is our light. Okay. This, we have selected the blue color because everybody loves blue. <laughs> So in this pipe here will attach to yes. the bottom of Yes, this one right here actually attaches to the bottom of the grow bed itself. Okay. So this is your this will be your filter for the grow bed. So now Corey, with this, this is um what's the depth of the uh, grow bed for the root system? This right here is three and a half to four inches depending on what type of uh, what section you're growing in. There are a, a few different depth differences in here mm -hmm. um, just due to the uh, the container itself the way they were built um, but it doesn't really matter on the depth of it because they will disperse out through the biostone and uh, there's really no predetermined closeness of each plant okay um, with this system because it is a fill a flood and drain system, there is no competition for water. Absolutely none. So you can grow your collard greens much closer together. Obviously with the, the light, that, that's the really the only concern you have would be drowning out the other plants from light. How about root crops? Can root you crops. Root crop? You can do root crops, yes, in this. In this system, what you would do with a root crop is you would take and get one of these smart pots Mm -hmm. um, some people use the coconut pots and you can take and actually embed them down inside the system and it will grow your carrots and your onions and all of your root crops. Excellent, okay. Now can we take a closer look at some of the uh, important parts? Okay. So, so this here right here is a uh, additional drain for the grow bed itself and this clip actually allows the, uh, the water to drain faster. It breaks the surface tension. Um, because of the small amount of the hole that's there, there's actually two of them in this system. It actually causes more aeration in the water and it helps time the system out. Okay. And on this one, this right here, this is your <coughs> fill tube. So this is what your pump will actually attach to on the bottom side and it will fill up through this and mm -hmm. come into the grow bed. The water will fill up to a predetermined by this pipe right here. This water is the, this is the water level, the maximum water level in this system. You have your bell siphon set up, which is you got your your bell siphon pipe, which is your stand pipe. This actually is what creates the suction in here. They can put it on top. And then you have your media guard, which all it does is actually keeps the media from clogging up your bell oh, siphon. Right. Okay, yeah. That's so, not gonna go through at all. No, yeah. So this is that's that. And that all fits together like this. And then you would just take and fill the rest of this material up. Making sure that's not going to disturb the uh, belt sack as much as possible. And then you would install it onto the top of your fish tank. Okay, let's put this thing together. Stainless steel screws. That way you don't have to worry about any type of rusting or anything. Screws it together right there. And it takes four screws to put the whole system together. Oh yeah, there's a lip here, so they just line up. Correct. Not too hard at all. So it actually, it causes it to be a stronger system, so you don't have to worry about any type of internal bracing or anything like that. This, it'll hold all the weight of all the water and the grow material right there. And 
And now when someone purchases this kit, they probably wouldn't even need to deal with all of this. They could just buy it all in one piece, set up with the media. That is correct. They can do that. Um, that would be under the constraints of whatever vehicle they are transporting. Okay. So if they're going to put it in a small car, yeah, it's going to have to be a, a system that's been taken apart and they're going to have to put it together themselves. Okay. Um, and that is the reason why I, I took so much time and tried to make it as easy as possible to, to put together. And it really is plug and play. It really, it really is, is, yeah. So, okay. Why don't we fill the rest of this up? you're getting your media, like we said, this system can come with it all together or it can be brought in separate pieces. Uh, if you want to use some type of other media such as uh, maybe river rock or pea gravel or something like that, you can use that as well as long as it's not reactive to the water and does not increase the, uh, the pH. How about lava rock? The lava rock can be used. You need to make sure that it's washed thoroughly and that it does not react with the pH. A good test to see if you're going to buy your own media for this system would be to use a, uh, a small, maybe a red solo cup or a clear plastic cup, put a small amount of your material in it and then put uh, vinegar in it. And if it bubbles, then it is too high in pH. The system will not run with that rock. So that's a good little check that you need to do to make sure. This one has already been checked. This fly stone is very good and it, it worked great. Now for my favorite part, let's do some hydro. <laughs> so the next step after you install the lid, you take and just your little pipe here. It plugs into the bottom side of your fill tube. Just like so, it's all pressure fit. It's not glued together. You don't have to worry about any type of glue leaching into the system, so the fish will be okay. Make sure the pump is stuck down. Most pumps have a suction cup of some kind on the bottom of it to keep it down. Mm -hmm. And even if it doesn't, it's still okay. Because it, 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 with the water pressure, it will stay to the bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and fill this up. The system holds approximately 27 gallons of water. I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of the bell siphon tube. This right here is actually what handles the water on the exterior. The uh, siphon does require this other 90, that way it does create a vacuum. So you just take and push it in, similar to the way the pump hooks together. It's just pressure fitted. You don't have to worry about any type of glue. Where was that? There it is. Also, another little feature we added to this system for to make it easier and maybe a little bit more appealing to most. I've uh, added handles to this system that are actually made into it, made from the barrel itself. They. Uh, the system with the Viastone in it is relatively light without the water in it, obviously, but um, it can be moved relatively easily, especially for whenever maybe you have to clean it. You should clean it probably once every eight to eight to 12 months would be about a good, and also depending on how many fish you put in it as well, is gonna determine on how often you need to fish it. Okay, so as far as Fish. How many fish and what kind? Mainly just goldfish? Koi? You can use goldfish, you can use a uh, smaller version of koi. I personally like the butterfly koi and the butterfly goldfish myself. Mm -hmm. um, they're really beautiful fish. Uh, with the introduction of light to this system, as normal systems do not have a sight window in the front, there is an algae problem that could possibly happen. Um, the best way to deal with that would be to maybe scrub the sight glass once or twice a month and put a kissy fur or sucker fish inside in order to clean the tank itself. Um, 
If you put two to three kissy furs in there, I don't think you'll have any type of problem with any type of allergy. Kissy fur? Kissy fur. Okay. It's a Picosimus, sorry. That's a official terminology. Picosimus. <laughs> now, when we get started, You'd mentioned something about the importance of this uh, cold process seaweed. Yes, this cold process seaweed would be the best way to start your system. Um, what you need to do, because most people are using a uh, obviously a city water or possibly a well water that may not be prop really good for the fish, you don't really want to put any type of extra chemicals into this system as of the fact that it will get into your plants and whatever you're eating. And the real object of this is to know exactly what is going into your food. Mm -hmm. um, right. So you, you, know, you, know, you don't want to use a dechlorinator or anything like that in the system. So what you want to do is you want to start the system up. How full are we here? Are we almost there? Pretty close. Okay. But you want to start the system up with uh, using this seaweed extract so you can start your plants. You can go ahead and start your plants before you put your fish in, you need to give the water at least a week of uh, dechlorination for the chlorine to evaporate. You can do that much faster in hotter temperatures, obviously, um, because it's going to evaporate a lot faster. You can turn off. You turn off. Yeah, it's off. So you more? No, that's fine. It's um. So, in order to start the system, you use the seaweed. This actually feeds the plants. So. The plants will grow, they'll develop their root system, which will allow the system to be more mature for whenever you put the fish in it itself. So whenever you put the fish in, you want to wait before, beforehand, you want to wait about a week to put your fish in. Um, it'll all, it will have run through its cycle, the plant will be established, everything will be growing good, mm -hmm. and the bacteria should be growing pretty close. There are two, there are a few different ways of adding and helping the system start out in the beginning. It would be um, a good idea to maybe go to some place and get a water soluble urea type of fertilizer and put a small amount in there to help the bacteria actually begin to grow. I've known some people to use a uh, cow pee you can use cow pee as well because it's also urea. It'll help the bacteria grow. Some people do it in the right, cells. I guess, I guess your own. You can yeah. use your own as well. Not necessarily recommended, but you can. Why not? <laughs> Some things you should just not do. <laughs> Down you're hearing is the uh, the drain tubes that are in the bed aerating the water. That is them dripping down. Oh, that by itself would be a fine job of aerating. Yes. Yeah. And like I said, as long as you don't put a, an abundance of fish in there, you don't really have to have any worries about type of any other form of aeration. That's great. Yeah, so, so no air stones, no, no air, air pumps. Stones. You don't have to worry about electricity for the air stones. You don't have to worry about any of that. We're an air pump. No, nope. you don't have to worry about running other lines down in there. Either. All mechanically done, as much as possible, mechanically done to decrease the the cost of setting and running the system. Running this system, as long as you use the light, uh, only whenever you really need it, or you know, whenever you're having a party or something, like that, you can show it off. Run it two or three hours and shut it off. You don't want to have the light running constantly. You don't want any algae. Exactly. Yeah, the spawn or, or growing um, there. It'd be just like your regular fish tank inside your house. You don't you, you don't run the light constantly. Now this thing can be fit up for lights that are run on a normal fish tank. Um, that's not something I'm doing currently, but uh, they can. Um, so this is going to flood. Yes, this is the root is currently flooding right now. The roots are going to be nice and happy. Oh, there it is. Yep, you see the water level. Nice the water Sorry, rising. And uh. Yep. This system, it, it costs uh, around five dollars a month for this whole system, um, not including your fish food or the or a lamp. Grow if, lamp. If you do have some type of grow lamp, that is also something that's an additional as well. But this system itself, just with that one pump, it runs about five dollars a month, and that's with the pump running constantly. That's really good. So it's. Does the pump run constantly? It does run constantly. There's no timer. There is no, no timer. You don't have to worry about setting it up. No nothing. 
Everything is actually ran by this one bell siphon right here. Do you find that, um, do you find that there isn't any oxygen issues up top as far as the roots? I've had not had any type of problems with it. I can actually and have grown four tomato plants, full-size tomato plants, in this one system mm -hmm. at a time. So this is almost like a hybrid between a deep water culture. Correct. And not a flood and drain, but I suppose if you attach the pump to a yeah. timer, you could, yes, you could. do it uh, flood and drain if that's what you prefer. Um, if, if that's the case, you would have to put some type of aerator in it. I know what you decide. Yes, that is the siphon. It just now kicked in. You can see it's tumbling down to the bottom here. It's going to suck all the water out of this until it hits a certain predetermined amount. Uh -huh. And then it's going to stop and begin to fill again. This system runs on, it's between a four to five minute fill and a two to three minute drain. Well then that almost is really almost like a hybrid between VWC Correct. and flood and drain. Yeah. Okay. And there, there it is, it's starting to kick out now. You can hear it, it'll start sucking air. I do hear it, yeah. Bring up the water going. We have water. Let's pull out here, and then it's just... Obviously this will have a little bit more water in it. It fills up to about right there Okay. in this system. Um, in the future systems it will have a window much lower than they are currently now. What um, are you using to water uh, seal them? Uh, aquarium safe Silicone. seal them. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. It's all aquarium safe. I don't want to have any type of chemical leaching into the water. And then these grommets for just more durability to hold it? These are actually the bolts. This right here is the bolts. Hold that actually it, yeah. hold the, the window in itself. There you have it folks. Corey Young, Apocalypse Survival Systems and his plug and play aquaponics system. We thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video here at Indoor Growers. We will see you next time.